Our guest is Isaac Holman. Isaac is founder of Medic Mobile, which is a nonprofit technology and healthcare company that has improved care for three million people in more than 20 countries. He received his degree from Lewis and Clark College in 2009 in biochemistry and molecular biology. Isaac, when you started college, what kind of future did you envision for yourself? And how did liberal arts education play into that? Fun question. I was, at the time, I first applied to college, very unclear about what I wanted to do. Um, two important interests during high school were auto mechanics, because I loved tinkering, and medicine, because I wanted to do something where I could help people. And an important decision point for me was applying to colleges and then choosing a study abroad for a year in the Netherlands. And it was uh, a fantastic year to learn a new language, live in a very cosmopolitan environment, explore a very different uh, socio-political environment. And when I was, again, making the decision about where to study, I was uh, more interested than ever at that point about having opportunities to study in a number of subjects, uh, being in a community where people were traveling, studying abroad, um, and trying to integrate the, the different things they were learning, different parts of the world and different disciplines into some perspective on, on the challenges I was interested in. And an, an important touchstone for me, um, as soon as I started at college, was um, meeting some people in the health and social justice community at Lewis and Clark. And um, I really, my ambitions quickly uh, focused around this idea of, of being a doctor to or with the poor. And uh, working in my, in my native Oregon, but particularly working abroad as well. And um, it was a thing that I had thought of as a, as a potential opportunity when I was looking at schools. And so I had uh, intentionally chosen a school that was strong in um, the natural sciences and that provided research opportunities for undergraduates in addition to a really strong study abroad program. You've been named one of the top 30 under 30 social entrepreneurs by Forbes magazine and you're a fellow at the University of Edinburgh's Global Health Academy. What's next for you? And what liberal arts skills do you think might help you get there? That's a, a great question because it's been an incredible journey these last few years. I started Medic Mobile when I was in my fourth year of undergraduate studies at Lewis and Clark and worked on it full time for three years and it was a roller coaster of a few years. You know, I started out thinking that it would be a one-year fellowship before transitioning to medical school. And the experiences I had uh, working on healthcare in low-income communities and being part of a team, building a team, were life-changing for me and career-orienting. And I realized that I could do more to improve global health by focusing on the uses of technology and how we organize and deliver care rather than being a clinical care provider myself. And I, you know, it's, it's been um, a, a constant challenge for me, um, but one that I've really benefited from to keep pushing myself into new areas. Um, and so social entrepreneurship was, was an area that I hadn't anticipated focusing on during my undergraduate studies. And when our organization got to the point where we were a relatively mature, sustainable organization, around 20 staff, um, I decided to step away from the leadership role I was in and start graduate studies. So I'm now in a, a PhD program in innovation and strategy at the University of Cambridge and have a very exciting program of research going on that bridges my continued work as a practitioner at Medic Mobile with my scholarly interests around human-centered design and digital innovation for global health. And so what the future holds in store is hard to say. I think that I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't say I've got to a point where I ever finished discerning. It's an ongoing process, and I'm still trying to figure it out. And I think what I know for sure is that I will have one foot in research, one foot in the academy, and um, one foot helping practitioners to provide better health care. Uh, but what exactly that looks like institutionally, um, in terms of where I'm affiliated, I haven't found out yet. You've had a global footprint in your career. Can you talk about that a bit and what implications that has for the future and perhaps for the future of other people who are seeking to do the kind of work that you do? I certainly would say that I did not anticipate my career taking the turns it has. Uh, both the exciting successes and the difficulties, the you know thinking on my feet and trying to address challenges that I didn't always feel perfectly trained to address. And really that no one did because we had this opportunity to participate in the creation of a new industry. People hadn't been using digital communication technologies to improve healthcare for the poorest of the poor around the world. Uh, and so I think that, again, I would say that the process of discernment has been very important to me, but getting to a point where I know what my career will look like hasn't happened yet. And, and so I joke around with my mom who recently retired. She says, when I grow up, I want to do this or that. And I'm much the same way. And I think I always will be saying, when I grow up, I want to tackle this next challenge. Having a global footprint in terms of having opportunities to see different parts of the world, I think is a very important educational opportunity. It's been growing, particularly at liberal arts colleges, and it needs to continue growing because people will go, be going on holidays to foreign countries, whether it becomes an educational opportunity or not depends a lot on the proactive leadership role taken by higher education institutions. Um, but, but whether you know, every liberal arts student should become a social entrepreneur, maybe not. It's a thing that some people really thrive on. The pace of activity is pretty intense. And um, you know, I would think twice before starting another startup. Um, and you know, I, I was a, a bachelor at the time. I lived out of a suitcase for more than three years. I didn't have an apartment in between finishing undergraduate school in 2009 and starting graduate school in 2012. And it really was the opportunity of a lifetime, and I loved it. And it was important for the work we were doing. But not everyone wants to do that. Um, yeah. Thank you, Isaac. It's been a pleasure talking to you.